So if we need 20 times the ratio just to get to low Earth orbit of fuel, 95%, and it's dramatically worse getting to the moon, how does this... How do we even do this in the first place? You'd kind of think it's impossible, but yeah. the engineers have been really smart and they figured out ways to have incredibly large, incredibly thin fuel tanks. Yep. Some of the fuel tanks in some of the rockets were so thin that they had to be pressurized all the time. They're oh. kind of like the thickness of aluminium yep. foil in your kitchen. That if you took away the pressure inside, they just crumpled just up crumpled. like aluminium foil because you have to have the absolute minimum. But you look at like a Saturn V rocket going to Mars, this. Up here. Yeah, that's the people with their life support and their capsule, all the things and everything else is fuel, fuel tank rocket. and rockets, which have to be as lightweight as possible. So it's an awful lot of fuel for a very small amount. And it's not even all of that comes back. It's just even the top. That's right. That's right. That's what actually comes back. That loses. That stays on the moon. That's right. So this is looking so difficult. What, is there some way to cheat? Yep. And I think the question is, you can actually start to look at it already in the design of the rocket. And there's something we call stages of a rocket. That's right. So the trouble is you might only have 1% as your dry mass. And if that 1% is all occupied by fuel tanks and rockets, that's going to give you no dry mass left over to send Neil Armstrong to the moon. That's right. So you really want to minimize that as possible. And one way is you, you make the, the fuel tanks incredibly thin, which is a lightweight. You have to make the engines as lightweight and svelte as possible. And even with all that, it's going to be very hard. There's still hard. going to be a limit to what you can do. So one thing that's very commonly used is, as you say, stages. The idea would be that um, you, most of your fuel is going to be used up quite low down. Mm. And so you could then throw away part of your fuel tank and rockets. Because you're essentially, at this point, if you were to carry the rest of it with you, you're kind of carrying dead weight. There's no fuel on board, so it's not actually generating any delta V for you or exhaust. So therefore, it's kind of just dead weight. That's right. So what these rockets often do is they throw bits away. They'll have some part of the rocket, whether it's the bottom stages or the boosters, that fires like crazy for the first minute or something of takeoff. And then once it's burnt out, you throw it away to keep your weight as low as possible. So your dry weight is going and down. Then so th and then we have what's called the second stage, which is then you have another set of rocket engines that take over with all that dead weight loss, but still generating it. But you don't need as much fuel. It's got some drawbacks because yep. you're going to need two sets of rockets rather than one, and that's it going to add to your more weight. Complicated. It's more complicated. That's right. There are more things that can go wrong. Yeah, that's right. On the other hand, the normally most of the fuel is used in the lower stages because that's like when you're pushing your boat. With that's right. Lots it's of those rocks. first rocks are really going. That's right. Are really hard, so you can get rid of a lot of the weight by throwing these away, and also you can optimize the higher stages. Yes. So, uh, for example, have bigger nozzles so they work better in a vacuum because they don't have to work on the Earth's surface. So this is what is almost invariably done. I don't think there's any attempt to have a single staged orbit rocket. Pretty much every rocket I've has seen stage. has got stages. I think some of the air launch ones are single stage, but that's... But that's also a little bit different because they've already gone into the air a little bit and done some of that heavy lifting. So most rockets need at least two stages and there are some with three. Yeah, that's right. Um, here's actually a movie of SpaceX Falcon 9 watching the stage separation. So at the moment, it's the bottom stage that's firing here. And so this is the rocket. That little bit is the payload at the top. So that's yes. the thing we're trying to get into space. And they're tracking this with a ground-based camera, which is doing actually a pretty good job. Yeah, actually okay, and now it's running out of fuel. So, so it's now run out of fuel in the bottom stage. And now it's going to, uh, there's explosive bolts in the middle that are going to separate it. And we'll just start to see in a second. So we there can we start to see now there's a gap. Uh, as it moves, it'll come back. Yep. Um, so you can clearly see now there's actually another engine that's appeared. Yep. And the first stage now fires some thrusters to ro move it away and to rotate it, because that's going to come down and be reused as being SpaceX. Because this was the idea of instead of just <laughs> dropping that in the ocean and not reusing yep. it, let's reuse it. But now the second stage is lit up and is now firing. But you can tell that's, that's dramatically smaller, right? Yes. Again, that's the payload. That's the actual second stage rocket. So it doesn't need to be as big nor carry as much fuel. And it's much lighter. So that means you've got a bit more weight for payload because you've got rid of a lot of the weight of your That's right. fuel tanks and engines for the bottom stage. So essentially, you can make this ratio and efficiency in the first stage, and then you can do it in the second stage, and then in some cases, as you said, the third stage. So it helps a bit. And because this is such a difficult problem, you need that bit. It's very hard to do it. Every little bit counts. <laughs> Every little bit helps. But we really need some more benefits as well, because it's still looking extremely difficult to get to space.